Adina, I'm going to be reading The Little Green Goose by Adelaide Sanson. In a little old barn on a little hill lived four hens, a nosy rooster, a cluster of chicks, Daisy the farm dog, and Mr. Goose. Mr. Goose was great friends with the chicks. Like a loving uncle, he played games with them, tag or hide and seek. He often took them down to the pond or gabbled a story to them. But when the chicks were hurt or upset, they ran straight for their mother's hens. And when they were proud, they boosted not to him, but to their father the rooster. Mr. Goose longed for a chick of his own, a baby that could raise it himself, a downy little goose who would call him daddy. The farmyard was full of chicks chippering, daddy, daddy, but it was always that old rooster who answered the call. So one day, Mr. Goose decided to ask one of the hens for help. Good day, Mr. Brown Hen, he said politely. Would you like to be kind enough to give me one of your fine eggs? I would so much like to raise a baby chick. Cluck! Mrs. Brown Hen was so startled that she almost fell out of her nest. You're not a hen, you're a goose, she said. Poor Mr. Goose waddled away sadly. That night he thought it over. There was nothing wrong with wanting to be a father. And if he had no wife to lay him an egg, he had no choice but to ask the hens. So back he went, this time to the nest of Miss White Hen, Miss Black Hen, and Miss Speckled Hen. Would any of you be kind enough to give me one of your eggs? I would like to raise a baby chick myself. Cluck, cluck, cluck. The hens were so outraged they almost fell off their perch. Mr. Goose waddled away sadly. Daisy found him behind the barn, curled up grumpily in a clump of grass. Woof, woof. Daisy barked excitedly. I hear you want an egg. Come quick, I found one. Daisy led Mr. Goose to the edge of the woods. There on the ground was an egg, a big egg. I found it, I dug it up, I dug a hole for my bone, I found this egg. Daisy spoke in short bursts of excitement. It looks a bit old, it smells a bit too, but maybe you can still hatch it. Oh, thank you, thank you, said Mr. Goose. In no time at all, he built a nest. Carefully, he tucked his huge egg in the middle, fluffed up his feathers around it, and settled down. There, he patiently sat day after day and dreamed of his little goose. He left the nest only for moments at a time to nip a grub or sip a beak full of water. One morning, he heard a faint tapping sound then he felt the egg shift and saw a crack spread across the shell. The hole in the egg grew bigger and a tiny little beak appeared. Or was it a beak? Before Mr. Goose could decide, the egg cracked open and the chick slipped out. It had short paws. It had a wonderful glossy green skin and it had a long tail too. Mama, peeped the chick, hungry mama. He thinks I'm his mother, cried Mr. Goose overjoyed. Daisy ran around in circles, barking excitedly. Isn't it wonderful, asked Mr. Goose. 
He is, said the dog. He is wonderful, Green Goose. Mama, peeped the little Green Goose again. Hungry, Mama. Mr. Goose fed his baby worms, snails, and other delicious bits that he dug up with his beak. It was hard feeding, too. But Mr. Goose was tireless, and the little green goose grew and grew. Every night, tucked in the nest, Mr. Goose would gabble up a bedtime story. And before the little fellow fell asleep, Mr. Goose said, Close your eyes and sleep under my wing, for you are my little green goose, and I love you. Mr. Goose taught his baby how to walk and how to feed himself. He taught himself how to speak kindly and to be polite. At last, the little green goose was ready to meet the animals in the barnyard. Mr. Goose was proud of his son and was sure the others would be amazed. And how amazed they were! Mr. Goose actually had hatched a chick. And what a chick! They've never seen anything like it. Soon the little green goose was allowed to play with the chicks in the barnyard. But one day when Mr. Goose was not there, the other chicks forgot their manners. You're not a real goose. Yes, I am. No, you aren't. Yes, I am. Mr. Goose is my mother. Not true. Look at yourself. You have no feathers or beak. You have no wings and you're all green. Mr. Goose can't be your real mother. The little green goose began to cry. He ran to the pond and looked in the water. The chicks were right. He had no white feathers. He had no yellow beak. He didn't even have wings. He looked entirely different from Mr. Goose. I have to find my real mother, he thought. On a stone on the bank sat a fat green frog. You have little feet and no wings, cried the little green goose happily. You must be my mother. Croak, said the frog and leaped away. Maybe not, said little green goose. Out in the pond swam a fish with glistening green scales. You there, cried the little green goose. You are my mother. Splish, went the fish and swam away. Maybe not, the little green goose said in disappointment. But then he saw a lizard with little feet, glistening green skin, and a long tail. He called to the lizard excitingly, you look exactly like me. You must be my real mother. I am not. Yes, you are. I am not, said the lizard. I have never seen an animal like you. But I am here, cried the little green goose. I must look like somebody. Who is my real mother? It's certainly not me, said the lizard, and crawled away. The little green goose sat down and sobbed. I'm just a baby. I need a mother. He was hungry. Who would give him something to eat? He was tired. Who would make him a soft nest? But most of all, the little green goose was lonely. Who would love him? Suddenly, he leaped to his feet and began to run. He knew just where to find his real mother. He ran faster and faster. Mama, Mama, he called. It's about time you came home from supper, said Mr. Goose fondly. But I am not your mother, I am your father. Daddy, whispered the little green goose, contented, and he tucked his head under his father's warm wing and went to sleep. The end. Thank you and I hope you join us next time.